Hi, I'm Eric Shanks, Principal Technical Marketing Manager at Portworks. And in this Lightboard session, we're going to discuss why you might want to use data on Kubernetes as opposed to using a managed database in a cloud service. So let's look at a couple of examples. First, we've got two different clouds here, and we've got Kubernetes clusters deployed on each one of those clouds. We'll have an app that's deployed to Kubernetes. And since it's Kubernetes and containerized, this application can easily be ported to another Kubernetes cluster. So we can deploy this application from our GitHub repository down to that Kubernetes cluster, and then do the exact same steps to a Kubernetes cluster in a different cloud, and those applications should still work. Now, one of the problems that we typically have, though, is you need to have some sort of stateful data for those applications. Where do you manage your stateful data? Well, the easiest thing to do in a lot of cases is on these, these public clouds, we can use a managed database. So I can bring up my database here, and then I can connect my application to that database. The problem with this being, now my application is really pinned. It's pinned to this particular cloud because I can't move it to another Kubernetes cluster in a different cloud because I still have to have access to this data. To make this work, I would really need to make sure that this data could also be ported to another cloud very simply, and that's typically the challenge. Now, if I've got two different applications that are, that are written the same way, but they're running on two different clouds, and I'm using managed databases, well, in this case, I might be using an Amazon Document DB. But on the other cloud, they don't have Amazon Document DB. They'll have to create a different database. That's Cosmos DB. So now I'm actually running two different versions of my application. The application itself is the same. It runs in the Kubernetes cluster, and we can redeploy those. But the databases that we're managing now are different. Now, if you're an engineer, you might look at that and say, you know what, I can manage two different databases. They're very similar in, in nature. Uh, I have to access them a little bit differently, and I have to do jump through a couple different hoops. But really, the application's relatively the same on both clouds. I should be able to manage this. But there's a whole lot of services that you have to manage along with those cloud-managed databases to make it work with your application. So for ex example, on our document DB side, you might have to manage identity and access management policies. But over in our other cloud, you'd have to manage Active Directory. Back to our first cloud, what about uh, networking? I have to create VPCs. And over in the other cloud, I'm going to create a VNet. I keep going down this, this rabbit hole. I've got firewall rules now I need to add as well, so I make sure that only this application can talk to this database. So I have security groups. On the other side, I'm going to also have security groups in this case. But they're different. They're just named similar. So you can start to see now, in two different clouds, I'm running two different flavors of the same type of database, but I also have additional services that I'm going to also have to manage now along with this application. Again, as an engineer, you might say, look, I can manage all of these different services and manage two different ways for this app. But what happens when our application becomes more difficult? Instead of just having this app connect to a single database, what if you got more of a microservices type application and you're running multiple databases now? So now I'm running a different type here. Maybe I'm running a Kafka cluster or something like that. Uh, and I'm using managed services in that cloud to do it. Well, now you're starting to see the complexity is going to start adding up each time we add a new service to these clouds. There might be a better way to do this. And that's where we're talking about data on Kubernetes. And in this case, instead of using these connections down to our public cloud vendor, we can have our storage layer sit right inside the Kubernetes cluster. This is Portworks. Right? And I can do that on both clouds. And then when I'm trying to deploy my application, I can actually put my databases on Portworks as opposed to the underlying managed services. So now I can have these databases that live inside our Kubernetes cluster 
we don't really care how complex this application is because we know we can deploy it exactly the same way in another cluster. This is gonna make things a lot simpler from an operational standpoint. Now, however I've designed this application for one cluster, I can store that uh, YAML manifest and things in our Git repository, and then I can redeploy that in another cloud and we know it looks exactly the same. We're just using basic container uh, primitives to do this. Uh, in addition, now that our storage layer is the same in both places, we can do things as well like do replication. Now we can replicate that data between our clouds and the two applications still look the same. So this might be one reason why you wanna stay away from a managed database and start managing those databases yourself in Kubernetes because if you've got a multi-cloud instance, uh, this makes things a lot easier. So. Thanks for your time for watching, and this is a Lightboard video on data on Kubernetes.